Motivation is a tricky one. So I suggest that everyone ask themselves, what is it that I want to accomplish? And what is it that's driving me to accomplish this? And come up with two or three things, fear-based perhaps, love-based perhaps, or perhaps several of those in order to ensure alertness, energy, and attention for the task. And there's a lot of discussion nowadays about smartphones and devices creating a sort of attention deficit uh, almost at a clinical level for many people, including adults. I think that's largely true. And what it means, however, is that we all are responsible for learning how to create depth of, of focus. There are some important neuroscience principles to get depth of focus. How do you increase focus? You know, people are so familiar with sitting down, reading a couple pages of a book and realizing that none of it sunk in or talking to someone and seeing their mouth move, maybe even nodding your head subconsciously and, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and none of it sinks in. This can be very damaging for school, work performance and relationships, as many of you know. Best way to get better at focusing is to use the mechanisms of focus that you were born with. And the key principle here is that mental focus follows visual focus. We are all familiar with the fact that our visual system can be unfocused, blurry, or jumping around, or we can be very laser focused on one location in space. So let's think about visual focus for a second. When we focus on something visually, we have two options. We can either look at a very small region of space with a lot of detail and a lot of precision, or we can dilate our gaze and we can see big pieces of visual space with very little detail. It's a trade-off. We can't look at everything at high resolution. When we focus our eyes, we do a couple things. First of all, we tend to do that in the center of our visual field and our two eyes tend to align in what's called a vergence eye movement towards a common point. The other thing that happens is the lens of our eye moves so that our brain now no longer sees the entire visual world, but is seeing a small cone of visual imagery. Assuming that you're paying attention and you're alert, when you're very alert, your eyes are wide, your eyes are open. And as you get tired, your eyelids start to close. Blinks actually reset our perception of time and space. And blinking, of course, is necessary to lubricate the eyes. People blink because their eyes might get dry. But if you can keep focus by blinking less and by focusing your eyes to a particular location, that's probably pretty creepy for you to experience as I'm doing this. But the more that you can do this, the more that you can maintain a kind of a cone or a tunnel of mental focus. You need focus and visual focus is the primary way in which we start to deploy these neurochemicals. But how long can you maintain visual focus on a target, just on a piece of paper set a few feet away in the room or at the level of your computer screen? These are actually things that people do in communities where high levels of visual focus are necessary. Closing the eyes is one of the best ways to create a cone of auditory attention. And this is what low vision or no vision folks do. They have tremendous capacity to focus their attention in particular locations. I don't wanna tell people what to do or not to do, but think carefully about how often you're focusing on something and how good you are or poor you are at focusing on something that's challenging. We need alertness. You can get that through mental tricks of motivation, fear or love, whatever it is. If you want to learn as an adult, you have to be alert. It might seem so obvious, but I think a lot of people don't think about when in their 24 hour cycle they're most alert. Attention is something that can be learned and attention is critical for creating that condition where whatever it is that you are engaging in will modify your brain in a way that you won't have to spend so much attention on it going forward. That's the essence of plasticity, that things will eventually become reflexive. The language that you're learning, the motor movement, the cognitive skill, the ability to suppress an emotional response or to engage an emotional response, depending on what your goals are and what's appropriate for you. If you really want somebody to listen to you and really hear what you're saying and what's underlying it, you should not and cannot expect them to look directly at you while you do that. That's actually gonna limit their ability to focus. There's another aspect to learning, I, I think it's only fair to mention, which is that uh, we can all learn uh, very easily when there's something very bad happens to us. And I don't, um, I don't wish this on anyone, but it is the case that if something really terrible happens that we will have a uh, lifetime memory for that event. We, there are processes that allow us to uncouple 
the emotional load of that event. The reason why negative experiences are can be wired into us so quickly is because our nervous system's main job is to keep us safe. But at a deeper level, it's because negative experiences cue us to the fact that whatever's happening that's really bad is very different than the, than the other things that tend to happen before. So most of our experience doesn't remap us, but those negative experiences deploy high levels of norepinephrine, high levels of acetylcholine, and really make so that whatever it is that we experience in that bad uh, episode is essentially queued up. And so we're on the lookout for it. And this has a number of negative effects, but um, in terms of psychological and emotional effects, but it is really a, a process designed to keep us safe. The other ways in which we can learn more quickly, besides just making errors, is when something really surprises us. And if we're positively surprised by something or we are just flooded with this molecule dopamine, then there is a great opportunity for plasticity. Uh, dopamine is a molecule that's almost always associated with pleasure and with the accomplishment of a particular goal, but it's really also a molecule of motivation. It's a molecule that is released inside of us when we think we're on the right path. And it does have a capacity to increase neuroplasticity, motivation, etc. Each of us have some natural times throughout the day when we are going to be much better at tolerating these errors and much more focused on what it is that we're trying to do. But chances are that you can't focus as well at 4 p.m. as you can at 10 a.m. It differs for everybody depending on when you're sleeping and your kind of natural chemistry and rhythms. But find the time or times of day when you naturally have the highest mental acuity. And that's really when you want to engage in these learning bouts. Or just ask yourself, when during the day do you typically tend to be most alert? That will afford you an advantage in learning specific things during that period of time. So don't give up that period of time for things that are meaningless, useless, or not aligned with your goals. Humans do not like this feeling of frustration and, and making errors. The few that do, do exceedingly well in whatever pursuits they happen to be involved in. The ones that don't, generally don't do well. My brain is still plastic. Plasticity is a state of the brain and nervous system. It's not just geared toward the specific thing I'm trying to learn. So there are two aspects to plasticity that I think we really need to highlight. One is that there's plasticity geared toward the thing that you are trying to learn specifically. And then there are states of mind and body that allow us to access plasticity. The key is to learn how to focus better visually if you want to bring about higher levels of cognitive or mental focus, even if you're engaged in a physical task. So put simply, if you want to improve your ability to focus, practice visual focus. The finer the visual image and the more that you can hold your gaze to that visual image, the higher your levels of attention will be. The important thing to understand is that if we want something to change, we really need to bring an immense amount of attention to whatever it is that we want to change. 